and David Nixon from the other side of the desk here. David, what's going on, man? How you doing? AFR Tuesday. AFR Tuesday, and we are in our studio where we film AFR. So this feels, I feel very comfortable right now. Do you feel like yeah. we're in our, like, like we're taking over your area? Does it feel like, is this very territorial? Yeah, I feel like you're infringing upon yes. our space. Yes. Not, now you're too close to us. Well, I mean, you to guys are close together, so now you're too close to us. I mean, this is kind of down to tip-off space. But yeah, <laughs> me and Tyler, so. Uh, easy, yeah. easy. <laughs> basketball before football. I, no, okay. It's always, it's always basketball season in LDS gyms, uh, just saying. Okay, BYU uh, football, ranked 25th. Should BYU have been higher? Uh, should they have been? Probably. Do I like where they're at? Yes. In fact, I love it. Ooh. I love being the underdog. I, I love being able to make your way, make, make some uh, you know, movement up the rankings, uh, make waves across uh, the college landscape and, and kind of progress. Versus if you start at 10, how, it's, it's, that was more difficult to try to make, you know, every week climb the rankings. Did the, the quest rankings. for perfection burn you on this? <sighs> maybe, maybe. But, no, listen, I, I really do like it. I, I, you rather have a team that's trying to, you know, uh, strive for more versus be complacent and stay at, you know, top 10, top 12. I think the fact that you're just in the rankings in and of itself uh, is, is where you need to be at the beginning of the season. You have the respect. I think that it gives you some validity to everything you've done in the past, to the returners. I mean, it, 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 it kind of, for the players, it provides a little bit of, uh, okay, look, you know, they've given us a ranking of, of what we've done in, in, in our past, and, and it gives you a little bit of something to, to strive for. But I like it. I like, you know, the, people, the guys up north, Top 10 ranking, that's tough to live up to, right? There's a lot of pressure that comes with that. 25, it's like, okay, people obviously are doubting us, and now we can go out there and prove them wrong and climb up in those rankings. Third time in the preseason poll since 98. The other two times were on teams, uh, well, you on the 08 team, one of those. 07, you didn't walk in ranked. People felt like you lost too much, but you proved them wrong. 08, you walk in with a ranking, and then you went to the NFL, and then 09, they walk in with a ranking. It's been a minute. Yeah. Like, it's a meaningful thing yeah. for BYU to start ranked. And that's an interesting take. When BYU, we hope, evolves into uh, a team that's competing for Big 12 titles, the standard then changes, does it not? You're not the underdog. You're the, well, you hope to be 16th and climb into the top eight at the end of the year when you're in the Big 12 kind of deal, right? Yeah, I think so. And I, I think as BYU gets to the Big 12 and you get into a P5, you start to get more credibility as well, right? And I think people will realize the schedules you're, play, you're playing week in and week out, you don't have any cupcakes really. Throughout the schedule, like BYU, <laughs> Kansas, <this year. laughs> yeah, hey, Texas, Te like Texas, word. Texas, like the word right now. Well, beating Texas isn't that hard. Yeah, it's, it's kind of true. We've, We've seen BYU that. knows We've that. Seen yeah, that. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think being in a conference will obviously help. I think it boosts that. Frankly, I, I bet you if this BYU team was in the Big Twelve this year, I bet you they start twenty, maybe nineteen. A little P five bump. That's a little P five yeah, bump. I, I think I it may agree. take a sec because I think people will be like, "Oh yeah, BYU is in the Big Twelve now." But yeah, I, I see that yeah. changing too. So BYU, obviously at 25, but four of the Cougars' opponents were also ranked in the top 25, and we had a, a nice little discussion in, uh, in the first segment of the program. Uh, what do you think BYU's record is against those four teams that are, are preseason top 25? I think if BYU wants to live up to the seasons they've had in the past and what they're trying to build in the program, you've got to go minimum two and two. You've got to split them. Amen. Yep. Um, I think three and one's a success. Four and zero is uh, everyone's minds are blown, right? I mean, we're we're uh, blue goggles all yes. day, every day, twenty four yes. seven. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think minimum you get you guys split them, and you've got a couple of them at home, a couple away, and so uh, one of them being on a neutral field uh, down in Vegas. But uh, that I, was Notre Dame Stadium, my bad. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're we're seeing that come to fruition here. Wait but, a minute. Uh, no, I think with with Baylor at home and, and Arkansas at home, hopefully you, I mean. Baylor returns obviously a lot of stars as well. The quarterback's gone, but they had their backup who came in and played. Um, Arkansas, Smash Mouth, SEC, you know, and then you've got Oregon. I like the Oregon game, frankly. I mean, I think BYU matches up well with Oregon, yeah. uh, de especially defensively. And then Notre Look, Dame. They're only a six-and-a-half point favorite at home. Yeah. yeah. Which, they being Oregon. Oregon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And, and then Notre Dame. I'll tell you what, Notre Dame, with the schedule they have, I heard there was news that they had a couple guys fall to injuries, which yeah. happens every year in fall they camp. They have six scholarship receivers right now. Yeah, and then you start off with Ohio State, Stop. which you're going to get banged up in that game. It's always yeah. so interesting, right? I saw a tweet from uh, Brett Murphy that mentioned that – We left BYU out of the AP poll. But yeah, that, that's, we don't give too much credit there. at this point. Um, <laughs> tweet at him if you want. But I, 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 I saw an interesting tweet where he said in the last 20 years, excluding 2019 – there's been at least one top 10 team that has finished the season unranked. Yeah. 
And so these polls are, it, they're, they're fun. And, and I think yeah. for BYU, going back to the conversation earlier, it sets you up to climb in the rankings, right? You don't want to be 44th. Uh, and had to climb from there. Like the Mountain West. <laughs> like the Mountain West. Uh, it's nice West player David Nixon. It, it's nice to start in the top 25 <laughs> and climb. It makes it that much easier, obviously. Um, but at the same time, I mean, th there's so much movement in these polls. And, and for me, that's going to be what's interesting is, as BYU fans, we should be watching week in and week out, you know, as we've done Independence all this whole time, but specifically this year because of the four ranked teams, what they're doing. And, yeah. and when BYU meets them, what are, what's our schedule? What's their schedule? You and this is a top Notre 10. Dame to beat Ohio State. Yeah. You want 100%. Oregon to beat Georgia. Like, 100%. pull off those upsets. Look, and BYU can't control where these teams ultimately end up because you can only you play them as they are when you play them and you try and beat them and then you move on. Jeremy and I agree on which team this is. If there's one team that you think of the, of the four teams – that when the season is over, that's currently right now, that won't be at the end of the season, which, which would you pick? I know our friends up north are going to hate me for saying this, but probably Oregon because the Pac-12 okay. is just a dumpster fire. Because we, we both thought Arkansas. Those are yeah. two easy wins for yeah. Utah last year. Uh, I mean, I think, I think Oregon, I think the Pac-12 is just a mess. And, and I think Oregon will, you know, Oregon will get their eight, nine wins, you know, ten. I don't see Arkansas in the SEC in a double-digit double digit win season. No way. Just, there's the no schedule's way. too yeah. hard, David. It's too hard. That's what I'm saying. So we if look they at, win nine, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, yeah. Why, that's why I think you look at those teams and what conferences they're in. Um, and maybe Notre Dame's, you know, with a new coach this year, and maybe they surprise some people. But uh, I would say probably Oregon just because of the conference they're in. Baylor feels a little volatile, although they're building, because they lost the quarterback, Jerry Bohannon, although they started, you know, right. shaping at the end of the year. Abram Smith, 1,600 yards like Tyler Rodgers. He's gone, right? Uh, top two receivers, Taquan Thornton's in the NFL. Da, da, da. Two safeties. That one feels interesting, too. And like we were talking about, that's the most winnable game among those four because it's the first home game. And BYU's not coming in beat up against South Florida, hopefully. They're ready to rock at home. And uh, Dave McCann's Jets are flying over, and we're ready to rock, right? <laughs> and, and, and I will throw this in. It's a revenge game. I mean, and not, Heck yeah. and, and not only is it a revenge game, if you have to look back at that game, you go back and watch that film, BYU got dominated. I mean, nine yards allowed the, rushing? The, the score itself didn't look like BYU got smashed as bad, but defensively, BYU got run all over the field. And, and I think if you're a defensive player, yeah. I think that's the game you circle on your counter. Yeah, of course, USF because it's the first game. But that's the game, I think the most important game on my schedule is saying we've got to come back and, and prove our worth because we got, we got embarrassed. Uh, and that's a game that we got to come back and say, okay, that was – that was not the BYU defense. That was just kind of a, uh, an exception. And, and we've got to come out and, and, and prove ourselves. And so uh, that's – I agree. I think that game, the first one, hopefully not nicked up. Um, I mean, we go back and talk about this all the time where BYU, you look at their, their season last year, before they had nicked up, that run defense was phenomenal, right? And then all of a sudden guys started dropping like flies and, and you saw what happened later in the season. So uh, I like that game a lot. That's going to be I, – I, I've, I've said this as well on AFR that I think that game, the whole season hinges on that game. On Baylor? Yeah, on Baylor. Wow. I, I, think, I think you'll see either whether it's a 7-5, 8-4 type season or a 10-2 uh, you know, type season depending on that game. I think that will sway the t this team one way or another. It is interesting because if you, if you win that game, obviously you're heading in the right direction. If you lose that, it's like, well – do you win at Oregon? Do you beat Arkansas at home right after Notre Dame? Like, do you take care of business against Utah State, who, oh, by the way, won 11 games last year, won the Mountain West? Yeah. But we're not talking about at all, right? Yeah. I, I think the reason we're not talking about it is because BYU's rest of the schedule is so loaded, right? I mean, there's only five P5s this year compared to seven last year. But we, we're, we're not even talking about Stanford. Yeah. We're not talking about Boise State. I did, but the, right? the schedule is so yeah. loaded. I mean, yeah. when you talk about five P5s, four of them are ranked. I mean, I, you guys have probably discussed this. Right. I, I think it's probably their best, ske hardest schedule ever. Walking in, well, walking into a season, probably. Yeah. 91 was insane for Ty right after the Heisman. BYU goes one and three because they're playing UCLA, Florida State, Penn State, Air Force. Yeah. Like, and BYU goes one and three in those games. But then they go on a tear the rest of the year. They're like 8 0 oh, 2 or something. But um, yeah, okay. Well, let's finish with it. Oh. Well, no, no, question. no well, I was just going to say we, we've obviously talked a lot about the polls and, and the schedule and whatnot, but let's, let's get your take on the defense really fast. Um, we're going to actually, in our Top 5 Tuesday, we're going to talk about the best returning defenders. Okay. Um, use whatever criteria you want. What, what's, who's, in your opinion, BYU's best defender? Listen, I'm, I'm a linebacker, so I have to stick with my guys. Right? Those, are, those are my people, the linebackers. So I'm going with Peyton Wilgar, and, and I love Peyton because you can move him all around the field. Mm. Right? This is a guy who... Uh, you can play in the middle. He's big enough and beefy enough to play in the middle. You can put him on a rush in uh, when you go dive or nickel and, and have him rush out the end. 
but he also covers fantastic in space. And so I, I think this is a guy who's very long, very rangy, um, great speed. I, I, I love Peyton Wilgar. I love also how humble he is. This is a guy, yeah. Yeah. when's the great last time story. you heard an interview there, or even when he celebrates, he's not, it's not about him. It's always about the team. And in, and we did, you know, there was a deep blue on him last year that talked about him bringing in some of his uh, nieces and nephews. If, if people have not seen now, that, like, oh highly gosh. recommend uh, that. Unbelievable. I mean, so, so I just rely around him as a player, as a, as a guy, as a, as a man, as a human. Um, but I think on the field, his production level and, and what he brings as a leadership uh, perspective, too, is huge to this team. And, and I, I love Peyton Wilgar. I think, I think he's kind of one of those foundational pieces, as well as Peely. I mean, I think even those guys, linebackers, typically linebackers are your captains, right? Um, and, and because they are right there in the middle of the field, they've got to make checks and calls and, and, and kind of get guys in the right spots. But um, I, I think the linebacker core, if they, if they can stay healthy, right, this is always the if, the yeah. big if, um, man, it's going to be a special season if they can stay healthy. But even if they don't, BYU's had some great backups that have come in and provided great depth, you know, throughout the last few years. So. Yeah, I'm optimistic. UAB runs for 243 because there's no Peely and Wilgar there. Like, I mean, there's, that's part of the – that's yeah. a big story. Well, there, there's yeah, nobody sure. there, right? There's this, tough. I mean, what Aaron Roderick mentioned that uh, he looked out there and didn't recognize, like, half the guys started in that game on the defense. Like, Who's yeah. number what? <laughs> yeah. Who is that? Yeah, that's yeah. Okay, we'll see you at 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app on uh, AFR. Thanks. Yeah, man. we're excited for another show. Let's go. Thanks, Dave.